Hey guys, it's Dane here with another video and today we're going to be doing some experiments. We're going to experiment with making cold casting of something that looks like a stone instead of cold casting something that looks like metal. And we're doing that because we are using copper carbonate instead of a metal powder. Copper carbonate is something that you can find in a ceramics room for making glazes and stuff. It's a green powder and it contains copper in it so it sort of looks like copper oxide. It's not copper oxide, but it sort of looks like it. And as you can see here, I made these things look like stones. I'm going to give you pictures so you can see them better. And since these are experiments, I had some failures happen also. And as you can see on the back of this, here's a picture that's bigger. It has this weird texture to it, and it looks more like a rock than just regular resin does. This is Smoothcast 320. So these bubbles in it really just gave it a nice texture for a rock. And that was a complete accident. I'm gonna not lie to you right there. But since these are just experiments, any accident's a happy accident. All right, let's get to the experiments. So we are back with the supposed copper carbonate and we're going to try to make a mold of this using some two-part silicone molding material. We're gonna press it in. We're going to see if I can create what people call cold casting, which is where you make, usually you use metal powder and you sprinkle it inside the mold so as a dust coating, and then you mix some of it into a resin that you're going to cast something with. And that would make it so that the part looks like the piece of metal and it can be polished up because it has metal powder on the outside. But since this is not exactly a metal powder, but it has metal in it, that's an oxide, like a copper oxide looks like this. I'm going to try to use this same technique to make it look like I have an oxidized piece of copper. We're gonna see if it fails or not, so let's get to it. To make the mold for this, we take one part of each of these. It's big enough. And mix it together. If this stuff's old, it might not cure, but we'll find out here soon. And it's a rough ratio. That looks about good. All right. So I'll mix these together. Forgetting that that's a silicone mat, and I probably shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to have to wash that off soon. Yeah, the one thing silicone bonds to is silicone. So the one work surface that I probably shouldn't have done this on. All right, so I mix this stuff up, push it in. Once it's all mixed, let it sit for 20 minutes and then it'll be cured enough for me to pull this out and start making stuff. And as an added safety precaution for my silicone mat, I'm going to do it on this. All right, we're going to let that cure, come back in 20 minutes and let's do some science. Now we're back. We have the mold made. The mold's material's not really all that good anymore, so I'm going to have to be a little gentle with it. But we're going to mix some resin together, pour some powder in here, a light coating of it. I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing anything right at all. Well, the way this coats looks like it's probably not going to do anything at all. But it'll be fun to see what happens. So what we have is Smoothcast 320, mixing resin, cures, and off-white. But that means that I'm going to just add this pigment to it, see what happens. And then I might do another one where I add some black to the mix, so that way it actually makes more, look more like metal. So I'm going to mix some of this, part A and part B, into cups. And mix the powder into part B then mix them together and pour it in. Oh, without having clear cups, which I usually use this in, it's really hard to see how level it is. So this part might not even turn out well at all. Oh well. So I'm mixing it into part B. Let's pour in part A. So I mixed for 30-ish seconds. I'm gonna pour down this. So it doesn't just split here. Just saw the view. Yeah, I'm gonna pour down this 
spot so it doesn't displace the powder. Let it soak in. I'm going to find some other molds I have and we're going to cast into those too. This is a fingerprint mold. Should be hilarious. And this is really dirty mold. Oh, it's old. And now it's overfilled. You can see how it's getting thicker, which normally happens with resin because it gets thick. All right, so let's do some demolding. Let's demold this. Yeah, it snaps a lot easier than normal. Hmm. Ah, oh, there. It's got some air in it. Not sure if that's part of the... And initial looks, it looks nothing like metal. It just looks green. And it's a little more fragile, so we'll figure out if this is even worth casting with once we take out the main one. Oh, the fingerprint. Ah, oh, there, see? <laughs> All right, let's see what this did. Oh, you know, it got the powder on top. You can see the powder on top. That looks mildly interesting. There you go. So let's clean this up and see if it gets any kind of polish or anything like that. Well, it certainly is. Uh, Cool looking piece. I polished it up a little bit with some wax. This could be promising. Doesn't look like metal necessarily. Here, let me get some better light on it. Doesn't look like metal necessarily. But it does have a stone quality. It looks like a stone. I don't normally get that from a cast piece. I'm going to try this method. Okay, so you can see on the edge, it sort of makes the edge look a little weird. And that's just the raw plastic. I'm going to try this with a little bit of black black dye next in the resin so it gets more of a metal quality and see if that makes it look like a rusty piece of copper or not. And then I'll show you the results for that. So one thing I didn't expect was with with this uh, ink that I added, which is just <laughs> stamp pad ink, it's made it so this stuff really expands a lot more than it should. So it's going to be interesting to see if this stuff even cures at all. Oh, well, sort of cured. Uh, I'm going to let this cure a little longer, maybe an hour or so, longer than it should. And then I'm going to come back to it and unmold some of these and see if it did anything. Because adding that ink really made this not stable the same way it normally is. So I'm going to get back to this and show you guys the results. Okay, so this adding this black ink really, really screwed stuff up. Made the stuff super brittle. Like uh, charcoal almost. But uh, as you can see, since it's still in a mold, a pretty decent mold. Captured the details still pretty well. Like that's a finger. The color is pretty cool. And this is these two pieces compared to each other. So this is a little green that I can use on something. And this is a black one. Now let's look at the actual thing that we're testing to see if a black backing with that powder makes it look like a piece of metal that's copper metal that's rusting or if it looks like a stone or something. Oh, it might have ruined this mold. Or it's just stuck. There it goes. Come on. ruin the mold that's fine I don't really care but I want it to come out yeah yeah it ruins the mold
old. All right, let that be a lesson to you. Don't add ink to casting resin. It will ruin stuff. This mold is no longer usable. Well, I'm assuming it's no longer usable, but we'll find out. It's going back to its original shape. It's also getting really floppy. Huh. Alright, well, that might still be usable, but there's a lot of holes in it now. Alright, so this is it, pre-polished. Doesn't seem to have added... Here, let's focus. Doesn't seem to have added too much to it. I'm going to polish it up and see if it looks like a piece of metal or stone. If not, this probably isn't a good use, and we found out. Alright, so cold casting with ceramics grade copper carbonate. Is it really worth it? Well, if done properly, and you make sure you use real resin that and real ink that's meant for resin casting, so it doesn't <laughs> poof up like this one did, and doesn't create holes like these two did, Potentially a good use, not for making it look like metal or anything. It looks cool. This could be a nice look, like a stone or something. I mean, I, I think that looks nothing like a casting. That looks like a stone to me. With black, it's really hard to see the copper green show through. You can see it. Let me see if I can get that on camera. You can see some green flake in it. And it's got a green hint of hue. When compared to, like, let's say this one, where it's a little more green and a little less, just one notey. Mind you, these are polished with wax, but it sort of works. I don't think it's a fine enough powder, maybe, or I'm not entirely sure. As compared to a real stone, this is real stone, real shine. This is a fake stone. Pretty decent shine. Fake stone. Pretty decent shine. So, for metals, no. For stones, possibly. You might want to really do it the right way instead of the wrong way, which I just showed you. Does it ruin stuff? Hmm. Hmm. No, it might not ruin stuff, but it looks like there's a texture on the inside of that, so. Make sure you cast properly. And don't mix in inks that aren't supposed to be mixed in because that just adds moisture and adds air so it just creates bubbles all right hey thanks again for watching this video guys if you liked it please give a like leave a comment below about some other experiments you might want to see with copper carbonate you can see some of my other videos here or here i make things out of foam and wood and plastic and all sorts of things so please give this video a like i already said that if you subscribe that's really going to help out and we'll see you next time.